Hey, let's go ahead and get started. Um, can you hear me okay in the back? Great. Um, so if you're here to talk about the basics of Lando and DDEV, you're in the right place. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Mike, uh, I'm at Acquia. Um, I'm also an organizer of GovCon. I help uh, run our website. We're gonna actually look at some of the tools we use for uh, the site as part of this talk. Uh, but overall today what we're gonna be doing uh, is we're gonna be talking about containers and the basics of using containers. So if you've wanted to try out Lando or DDEV or Doxel, if you've had trouble with those in the past, Hopefully we can help you with some of that here today. Um, I want to be really clear, like this session is not to like say there's anything wrong with any of these tools, they're great. It's just to help you get started and some, something I hear a lot working with people who want to either volunteer for a not-for-profit like Drupal for Gov or folks that are trying to get started with Drupal is that working with these containers is really hard. That's fair. Um, I'd say it's really different. It's not actually that hard, but we'll, we'll see how you feel at the end of this talk. Um, but if you're here for any sort of like super advanced, super in-depth, that's not this talk. We're starting super simple and we're staying super simple. All right, so let's talk with a very high level overview. If you wanna do anything with Drupal, I don't care what it is, anything with Drupal, you have to have basic servers running to run Drupal, right? You have to have a web server, you have to have a file system, you have to have a database server. For hosting, that's usually not a big deal, right? You can go to an Acquia, you can go to a Pantheon, you can go wherever, and they'll give you the servers you need to run your site. If you wanna do development though, um, that gets a little more challenging because if you wanna run Drupal on your computer, that means you have to have a database and a web server and all that stuff locally. Now, I will be the first one to tell you I'm not a server admin. Uh, when I was freelancing years ago, the biggest thing that scared me about being a freelancer was I didn't know what the heck I was doing when it came to actually running web servers. Thankfully, it's much simpler today than it used to be. But regardless of what you're trying to do, development, site building, content, the, the slate is very equal in this, in this term, right? So you can be a, a, a super um, entry level, like content entry person, and you have the same requirements as a very, very experienced backend developer, and that's, that's a problem. A Couple other things we need to think about. Um, Developers tend to break things, for better or worse. It's part of their job. Um, and you don't want your oops to take down your entire development team. So years ago, I used to work in a team that had shared development environments. So we'd have five or six people all pounding on the same Drupal site on the same web server at the same time. I see some people cringing. That is an appropriate response. Uh, if one person makes a mistake, PHP fatal error, bad config, whatever, you potentially lose hours of productivity for the entire team. Again, that's a problem. So we want to try and isolate uh, each developer into their own space. We want to make sure that each of these spaces is consistent. If I'm doing development on PHP 8.3, because I updated my Mac and I didn't think about it, and you all are doing development on PHP 8.0 because you haven't updated and you're not thinking about it, it's a really high chance things aren't gonna jive, especially if our production web servers run PHP 8.1. Nobody's right, right? Um, and depending on your organization, depending on your setup, you may very well have not only multiple people working on the same project, you may have multiple projects going concurrently, right? So when I was doing consulting for Acquia, I could very easily, in the space of a week, be spinning up and spinning down three or four different customer projects. And each of those projects, even though they're all running Drupal, they're all running sort of our standard stuff, they could be running slightly different versions of the same stuff. So again, we want to have everybody isolated, we want to have consistent settings within a project, and then we also want to have the ability to run different projects all at the same time. This is where containers really come in to help you out. It's just like organizing your closet, it's just like organizing your kitchen drawers, right? You can get containers to sort of contain each of these different things that you're trying to work on, and it keeps it structurally intact so that they can be similar in shape and size, but totally different in functionality. Docker tends to be sort of the gold standard today, uh, but we're actually not gonna talk about Docker a whole lot, uh, because we're talking about stuff that sits on top of Docker and makes it easier. Give me a minute, we'll get there. The basics of a container are that you tell it what you need in terms of services. So in the Drupal world, that's typically at minimum PHP and MySQL or a MySQL-like database. Um, 
You might also need Node, NPM, some other stuff, depending on exactly what your project looks like. But at minimum, it's going to be a database in PHP. Um, you need to define the versions of that, right? So you might be running PHP 8.1, MySQL 5.7, just to throw some numbers out there. Um, you may need to script some stuff. Maybe not. Uh, and then you're going to spin up those containers and then work in them. And I'm, I'm intentionally making this sound easy because it, it is actually that easy. A um, few other things going a little deeper. So containers run on your host machine. So that means that your CPU, your hard drive, your memory on your computer get shared into the containers. So if you have a nice MacBook Pro like I do, and you've got a lot of memory like I do, and you have a lot of hard drive space like I do, you can run a lot of containers. If you have a 10-year-old MacBook Air or a Chromebook or something that is much cheaper and much less powerful, that doesn't mean you can't run containers. It just means you can't make your containers as powerful, right? So if I'm taking four of my CPU cores out of 16 cores or however many cores I have, I still have a lot to do whatever Mac OS and the rest of my host machine does. If I have eight total cores and I take four away, now my computer might be struggling to do things you know, like run Spotify and all the important work stuff that I'm doing every day. Um, number two, uh, containers, again, Lando DDEV containers, have a config file. And that config file is something you should commit into a Git repository. So if we're all working on a project together and I set up a container, I can commit the config for that container. You all can then pull the Git repo and have the exact same config on your machine that I have on mine. If one of you goes, hey, Mike, you set it up with PHP 7.4. That's silly. We're using PHP 8.2. You can make a change to that container, push it back up to Git, and then I can get it, right? You can turn your container solution into anything else that you manage in version control in Git. Hey, all of our containers are broken today. What happened? Well, Mike committed something two days ago. What the heck did Mike need, right? You can see it in the Git history, just like you can with anything else. Um, you can actually have many different containerization solutions on your machine. So I'm running both Lando and DDEV on this computer. Uh, a couple years ago, I was actually also still running like the Drupal VM stack. So I had VirtualBox, I had Docker, I had all the things. Um, they don't play well together at the same time. So like actively running Drupal VM and Lando at the same time is, is maybe not advised, but you can totally have it all on there and spin up and spin down, no problem. Uh, again, I can't stress enough, like you do not need to be like an IT admin, server admin, DevOps pro to be able to do what we're doing here. I've gotten pretty good at it over the years. That is not my background. So I, I assure you if I can figure this out and do it, you can do it. Um, and the last thing I would say is that all of the containerization stuff we're looking at today is Linux based. Don't let that scare you. It runs great on a Mac. It runs okay on Windows. Um, and you might be thinking, like, this sounds like kind of overkill, right? Like, do I need all this? Can't I just do something to my computer to make this work? I mean, you can. Um, you know, any computer does have the ability to run a web server. Like, Mac OS actually ships with a built-in web server. You can do that. Um, but there's a couple problems with that. Number one, it's one. It is a web server. So, um, if you're working on multiple projects concurrently, uh, and one's running PHP 8.2 and one is running PHP 8.1, like, we are at, like we're already at a bit of an impasse. Now you have to completely change your one web server to be able to switch back and forth between projects. Number two, just because I've got mine working doesn't mean you all have yours working. Nothing I do to make my MacBook run a web server is gonna help any of you. You're gonna have to go through and do all that config yourselves, as opposed to, again, if we're doing something with a config file that's standard, everything I do, you can take advantage of. Now you might be wondering, well, why don't we just use Docker? I mean, you can, Docker's awesome. If you wanna go learn about Docker and if you wanna actually set up and provision and do the, the various Docker Compose steps you need to do, you can. Um, again, the, the, the advantage of working with something like Lando, DDEV, Drupal VM, and Doxel, on and on and on. Somebody who knows a hell of a lot more about Docker than you and me took the time to go build out something that makes it really easy for you to work with Lando and DDEV and Doxel, so you don't have to know Docker. If you know Docker, go use Docker. It's awesome. The point is you shouldn't have to, and that's the real advantage of doing something like Lando or DDEV. 
Now, there are also a growing number of cloud-based container solutions out there. Uh, Acquia has one, Gitpod has one, like GitHub has them, like they're available. There's pros and cons of those. We're not gonna get into that a lot today because I'm not here to sell you Acquia's thing. Just be aware that if, if you can't run containers on your machine, if you don't know how they work, th there are cloud-based, web-based options out there. They typically carry some additional cost, but you also typically don't have to manage them. So, pros and cons. All right. Some real advantages of using something like DDEV and Lando. Again, we already talked about the shared config. Uh, it lets you do multiple projects, and it's YAML only. So again, yet another markup language. It's not PHP, it's not Node, it's not Java. It's literally very simple markup language. Um, I would say, if you are completely non-technical, it's still gonna be a little bit challenging to do this. Like, you can do it, but it's not just gonna come naturally to you, right? It's not like opening up you know, other non-technical tools. So you're, you're gonna have to dip a bit of a toe into the development world. It's an easy one, but you're still gonna have to. Um, it doesn't rel uh, work very well on cheap machines. Uh, and the last thing I would say is that it can be finicky and tough to troubleshoot. We're gonna talk about some of that today, but again, for, for somebody who isn't used to reading terminal output, for somebody who isn't used to having things crash and break, it, it can be a little intimidating. I mean, give you some tips at the end of the talk to try and combat that. Um, but again, be aware, you're, you're entering into a bit of a technical world here if you're gonna be using these. It's an easy world, but yeah. All right, let's talk about getting started. Um, so, I joke all the time um, that basically what you wanna do is turn your computer into a container store because you wanna be able to spin up and spin down anything that you wanna get going. Um, and I, I do strongly urge you to read the directions. Uh, I, I, can, I honestly swear that's what RTFM means. Um, DDEV and Lando both have great docs on how to get started. I mean, basically, you install Docker, you install Lando or DDEV, you configure it, which we'll talk about in a minute, and you're done. That's it. It's not that hard. Uh, I would suggest, if you're on a Mac, installing Homebrew. Uh, if you're not familiar with Homebrew, it's a package manager for Mac. Uh, if you're not running a Mac, uh, I would suggest buying a Mac. Um, so, um, Lando and DDEV do work on Windows machines. They do. But um, my experience is anytime I've worked with an Acquia customer that has Windows machines, if there's a problem and you Google that problem, 95% of the time what's gonna come back in the search results is this is how you fix it on a Mac. So finding the solution to common problems with these tools in a Windows environment, you, your miles are probably gonna vary in a, a not great direction. So they work on Windows. The documentation and community stuff is much more geared towards folks on Macs. So uh, again, I'm not doing you any favors if I don't tell you that. That's it, we're done. <laughs> Thanks for coming. No, I'm joking. Um, so before you do anything to Lando and DDEV, a um, couple other things I would recommend. Set up a Git repository. You can do that for free on GitLab, GitHub, Bip, who cares? Just pick one and set up a repository. Um, that way, uh, as you start to set up and work with your container, you can actually do commits. If you get something working, commit it. If you break it, roll back to the last known working commit, right? Like this is software development 101. You can do this with your config files. Um, you're still gonna wanna set up the basic project scaffolding, right, with Composer. So, you know, assuming we're working with a Drupal project, if you're working with a node or some other project, cool, use the dependency manager there. Um, the reason you wanna know what you're working with is that Lando and DDEV have specific recipes for specific versions of Drupal. So if you're running Drupal 10, hopefully you're all running Drupal 10. Uh, there is a Drupal 10 recipe. If you're hosting with a particular provider, again, there's an Acquia recipe, there's a Pantheon recipe, there's a bunch of them out there. Um, that way you have sort of a known starting point. Then we can actually get in and get started setting up the different containers. So we're gonna talk about setting up both of them. Uh, and I wanna preface these next couple of sections. This gets done once per project. So this isn't something every person working on your project has to do. Whoever's gonna set up 
the containers for our project that we're all working on together, you do it once. And once you get the config working, everybody else on the team is just going to consume that configuration and use it. So what we're talking about right now is how you get started for a project. It's not a bad skill to have, but you really only need one person on your team that knows this piece. Okay? So we're going to run a command called lando init. I'm going to show you in a moment what this looks like. It's going to ask you some questions like where do you want to install this, what recipe do you want to use, etc. And it's going to crank out a dot file, uh, .lando.yaml. Mac, by default, tends to hide dot files, so you may need to manipulate your finder to show dot files. Um, you're going to spin up your containers, and then you can see what's running. Again, I'm going to show you all this in a second. And you commit your file. It's pretty easy. Now, when you have a container, you want to do everything inside the container. So if I just run Drush on my computer, it's going to run it on my computer. If you want to run Drush inside a Lando container, you have to preface that Drush command with Lando Drush. By saying Lando, you're telling it run it inside Lando. Okay? So if I want to do a Drush site install, and I run Drush site install, it's probably going to fail because there's not a database running on my machine. If I run Lando Drush site install, it'll run inside, and it should succeed, theoretically, because the Drupal 10 recipe has the database I need. So let me show you what this looks like. So we're going to do just quickly composer create project, Acquia Drupal recommended project. We're going to call this GovCon 2023. Composer is going to go ahead and pull down the basic project scaffolding for a Drupal 10 project. It goes pretty quick. Even on conference Wi-Fi, we're going to go on into that. Can you all read this okay, by the way? Yeah? yeah. It's a little tiny, you said? I will so you zoom. created it the directory above. Correct. So now I've gone down into that GovCon 2023 scaffolding that I just created, right? the usual Drupal stuff, doc root, vendor, etc. I'm going to go ahead and run Lando and knit. So Lando's going to ask me some questions. Where should we get your app's code base? Well, in this case, I already have a code base. So I don't want you to pull it from anywhere. I want you to use the current working directory. What recipe do you want? Again, there's a bunch of different ones that are available here. And I'm going to go ahead and use, in this case, the Drupal 10 recipe. Where is your web root? My project scaffold puts it in doc root. Yours may do it differently. Web root and doc root tend to be the two common ones. Um, if you don't know that, you can look in the composer.json file and it'll tell you right where it is. What would you like to call this app? We're going to call it GovCon. Great. I have now created the file for this Lambda build. Open this. I will make this bigger in just a moment. And this is going to be very intimidating. There are four lines of code in this file. Let me make this bigger one second. So the name is GovCon, the recipe is Drupal 10, and the config tells it that the web root is doc root. Now, somebody who's used Lando for years, I'll tell you right now, this is not a super useful config file. We're going to need to do more things to this to make it useful, but this will work. We're going to provision it. It's going to work, okay? But that's it. Like, that's all you need to do. Now, the containers are not running, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run Lando start. Now, I have provisioned these containers a couple of times prepping for this, so it doesn't have to download everything the first time, if you've not used any of these containers before, be aware it's going to download. It's going to take a little bit longer. It's not going to take too long, though. Um, if you're on good Wi-Fi, you should be up and running within five minutes. It's pretty fast. What you can see right now is that it's basically spinning up several different. So we've got the app server. We've got the database server. Um, it's essentially uh, starting, stopping, restarting some of these services. It's right now waiting for the database service to be ready. And that's it. So my host machine is now running several different containers. 
So we've got our app server, which is essentially the web server. You can see it's actually going to give me a URL that I can throw into my browser and go visit. You can see my little Drupal install page is already loading, choose language. Um, you can see that I've got a database server. So right now this is only running two services. It's running a database and a web server. If you want Solar for search or Elasticsearch for search, you can do that. Uh, if you need a separate like Node.js server, you can do that. This is where that config file comes in, right? You can now go in and define whatever services you want Lando to run. We're not going to get into all that today. We're staying simple, but like this is where you start. Now, this is where Lando is a little harder than DDEV in some ways, and you'll see this when we do the DDEV example shortly. So if I do a Lando Drush, because I want to run Drush inside the container, site install, it's going to prompt me, database name. Well, remember, I just did Lando info, and up here, the database service, it's actually going to tell me some information about my databases. Database is not Drupal, it's Drupal 10. Password Drupal 10, user Drupal 10. So I need to go grab these, Drupal 10. It's a MySQL driver, database name, Drupal 10, Drupal 10, host is database. Again, I know that because it tells me that right up here. All right, all the info's right there. Yep, yep. And now Drush is running the Drupal install into the database that's running inside my Lando container on my host machine. Okay, now I can do a Lando Drush ULI. Again, not a pretty URL. Default doesn't actually help me. This is something you can configure and I will show you an example in a minute of how to configure that but I already know what my URL is, so I can throw in that user reset password, and I'm in Drupal. So, Lando up and running, a couple of minutes, not a big deal. All right, let's move on. All right, now, I'm gonna do that again in DDEV, but I wanna just call out very quickly something I said at the beginning. Lando and DDEV can coexist peacefully but they do not play well together at the same time. So I need to do two things to switch from what I just did over to the DDEV example I'm gonna show you. The first thing is I need to shut down the Lando containers I just started. So I'm gonna do that with a Lando stop. Party's over, it'll shut down. Here's the problem, Lando's still running. These containers are not running, but Lando is still running. And when Lando is running, DDEV cannot get access to all the stuff it needs to do on your computer to make itself work. So you also need to run Lando Power off. And this is actually going to take care of all of the background processes that Lando is running that DDEV needs to be able to function. Again, since they're both Docker-based tools, they compete over the same resources. Do you have to run stop before power off? I think you can just do power off. The reason I'm showing them separately is if you're working on multiple Lando projects, you don't need to power off, gotcha. right? So if I'm gonna stop working on Drupal GovCon and start working on Drupal for Gov, which are different projects, I can shut down one with a Lando start or stop and start the other one with a Lando start. I don't have to kill Lando. If I'm gonna jump from a, like a GovCon Lando project to an Acquia customer's DDEV project, then I would need to totally kill Lando. But yeah, Power Off should stop all the containers that are running and then kill the Lando services as well. Um, this will manifest itself by basically you try to spin up one or the other, and you're gonna see some funky errors that are like unable to start your port 443 service or something like that. Like it, it, it almost always represents an unable to start something. So just make sure you kill whichever one you're not going to do. All right, the DDEV setup process is almost identical. So the commands are a little different. So we're going to do a DDEV config instead of a uh, Lando init. We're going to call it GovCon 2023. This one already correctly guessed doc root. Cool. 
project type, again, similar sort of list. Drupal 10, I believe, is the default, but I'm going to go ahead and just type it to be sure, uh, and it's done. The DDEV config looks a little different. Uh, let me get out of presentation mode real quick. So Lando just has a single config file. DDEV will actually create a .ddev directory, and then there's a .ddev directory config file. Um, there is quite a bit more config out of the box in DDEV there is in than there is in Lando. You'll see in a moment, though, that's actually not a bad thing, because uh, some of the stuff that we had to sort of read through and enter during Lando just works out of the box in DDEV. It, it, that additional config that it does sort of just works. And if you actually look at what's in here, a lot of what's here is commented out. So, you know, the, the DDEV uh, config file has a ton of stuff that sort of helps you extrapolate and, and expand. Um, so really, the DDEV file is like 19 lines, um, but the file has 261 in it, okay? And then we're going to do the exact same thing. Now that we've done all of the things uh, to get that up and running, we're going to run ddev start. Again, ddev tends to take a little longer, in my experience, than Lando does to provision. It should go pretty quick again today, since I've, I've, I've already downloaded those uh, to provision. <coughs> it's up and running. If I do ddev describe, which is the equivalent of Lando info, again, it's going to show me the various containers. Notice that it actually is giving me one, two, three, four containers here. So it's giving me a web, a database. It presets up PHP my admin, uh, which is kind of useful. Uh, that's a database admin tool with a GUI, so you don't have to do a bunch of MySQL stuff. Again, if you're if you're just getting started, you're probably not going to be rooting around directly in the database. Um, but why not? Then it also gives you a mail server from MailHog. Uh, again, can you set those things up in Lando? Sure. Uh, DDEV just does it for you out of the box. You can see it's got the URLs, uh, GovCon 2023 ddev.site. Throw that in. Wants to install again. It wants to install again. Does anybody know why? It's different database. Different container, different database. So even though we're running the same code in the same project, we've now switched from one container to a different container with a completely different database. DDEV knows nothing about the Lando database that I just installed and turned off. So I'll have to do DDEV drush site install. So now it's going to ask, do you want to drop? And I'm going to say yes. And that's it. So again, DDEV has already pre-configured all of the database settings for me. Uh, behind the scenes, so I don't have to answer all those questions the first time. Um, and the other thing that it does for me out of the box, which is kind of nice, um, when I do Drush ULI, it actually has pre-configured the Drush uh, path in the PHP config for Drush, um, so that it, it actually gives me the right URL for uh, for the Drush URL, which is, which is pretty slick. All right, so again, couple minutes, we have DDEV up and running. And you may have noticed, even though I'm changing what I'm prefixing, and I'm running DDEV drush instead of Lando drush, it's the same thing, right? By saying DDEV drush, I'm telling DDEV, hey, run this thing inside of DDEV, all right? And yeah, again, it's, it's pretty straightforward. All right, so where do we go from here? As I already sort of pointed out, these are very, very basic config files. So uh, we haven't even touched Node.js or NPM or any front-end technologies. So if you have sort of any contemporary front-end stuff that you're doing with your team, you're probably going to need to either set up a dedicated Node service or inject Node into your uh, container. I'll show you an example of that. Um, you may have some additional scripting that you need to do. Um, you know, there may be some additional PHP libraries that you need to add, etc. but we're not going to go that far. This is the basics. This will work. You definitely want to test it, like I kind of just did, to make sure that you can actually install Drupal and everything works, and then you're going to want to share it with your team. Now, remember I told you a few minutes ago that everything we just did, you only have to do once per project. 
once I've done this, all of you have to run exactly three commands to use what I just did. You're going to clone the Git repo. So you're going to run a Git clone. You're going to install the composer dependencies for Drupal, so you're going to run a composer install. And then you're going to start the containers with either a Lando start or DDEF start. And now you're caught up to where I just was. It's that easy. Now, this presumes that each of you have installed Docker, each of you have installed Lando, so there's a little bit of pre-setup to do. But once you have all this stuff configured and set up and running, it's, it literally is that easy to share it. So when I say you really only need one person on the team that understands this pre-setup and this first step, like it's, it's true, right? You just have to get that config file set up. There is one gotcha I want to throw out there. Anytime anybody changes a config file, so let's say today we all start on PHP 8.1 and in a couple of weeks we upgrade to PHP 8.2, Anytime that config file changes, everybody on the team has to reprovision. So you can't just change the file, you have to rebuild your containers. That's a pretty small detail. We already talked about this, but just as a reminder, switching between projects, switching between, uh, between containers, you may need to actually stop and or power off. And let's look at a real project example. So the Drupal GovCon site, uh, we take great pains to keep this uh, open source and publicly visible. Um, so this is available on GitHub. You can go look at it if you really want to. You can pull down this Lando recipe and spin it up yourselves. Um, there are a few more lines in this one, but still not too many. So let's talk through what's here, just so you know. So uh, the name of this Lando project is Drupal GovCon. We're actually using the Acquia recipe instead of the Drupal 10 recipe because GovCon is hosted by Acquia. So there's a few specific things in there that make it easier if you're hosting with us. Um, config, web root, doc root, that's exactly the same. Uh, I'm running PHP 8.1. There's some Acquia specific config here and you'll see that I've got xdebug turned off by default. Services, uh, app server, this is the same one y'all saw earlier. Um, what else is here? I've got a Chrome driver because we do some different uh, testing um, that uses Chrome. So this is something we're injecting into Lando so that BHAT and um, uh, backstop uh, visual regression testing will work. We do have some specific um, like scripting that we do um, as part of the app server spin up. Um, we install an older version of Node um, sort of by downloading Node 14 and then running it. Um, we've got some other specific overrides I'm not going to get super in-depth into. And then we have some other tooling that we define. So uh, BLT is an open source uh, tool that uh, Acquia launched to help with um, development. Uh, we've got commands to turn xdebug on and off. There's a, there's a fix for an SSH issue uh, and some additional events. Again, most of what's in here you're probably not going to need on yours. But if you want to download a, and look at a slightly more complex example, um, this one's out there. The repo is Drupal for Gov, uh, Drupal GovCon 2017. So you're welcome to check that out. Um, the other thing, uh, and again, this is technically a BLT plugin, but you don't have to use it as such. Uh, I maintain a repo that is Lando focused. Uh, with quite a bit of like uh, documentation on like if you need to set up um, Drupal multi-site inside a Lando container, I've got documentation on how to set up multiple databases, multiple URLs, all that stuff. It's pretty slick. Uh, Lando actually makes that very easy. I, I think DDEV does too. I just I've not done multi-site with DDEV personally. Um, also talking about how to set up a, a solar service. So if you need um, to do like search API stuff like that locally. You can. Again, this is getting more advanced. I just mention it to let you know it's out there should you want it. A couple of pro tips and reminders. Um, if a command is failing, always check and see where you're running it. I can't, I like, I still occasionally, you may have noticed, I actually almost did it in front of all of you today. I almost just ran drush something, right? Mm -hmm. You have to run drush inside the container. So if you're getting a funky error, go make sure, right? Did I run that command inside the container or outside the container? Um, it's really important to make sure that all of your versions of everything match everything. 
So your DDEV and Lando PHP node database NPM composer, all that junk needs to be exactly the same as it is in whatever CI CD tooling you're using, assuming you're using CI CD tooling, and it should also match your cloud hosting. So if you're running PHP 8.2 in production right now, everything should be PHP 8.2. The only reason you should go up to PHP 8.3 is if you have a ticket in your backlog that says upgrade to PHP 8.3 and you're now starting that upgrade process, then you can start sort of bubbling that up from your locals up. But it's really important that everything matches. If you have node 18 in your um, container and node 20 in your CI CD tool, your builds aren't going to work, right? Because the versions are out of whack. Um, treat your containers like they're extras in movies. They're completely expendable. So if your laptop gets stolen, if you spill coffee on your laptop, if you screw something up and you damage a container, that shouldn't ruin your day. It's okay. It's going to happen. This is why you should always be committing your work, and this is why you should not be doing anything too important in that local database. Because again, that local database is completely throwaway. So assume it's going to break, and that's OK. All right, It's expendable. They're designed to be. If you get an error, slow down. It's OK. Read it and Google it. I cannot tell you how frequently I solve people's problems by literally copying the error that they sent me, pasting it into Google, and then sending them the first result I get back. <laughs> yeah. OK? I'm very good at troubleshooting things because I'm very good at Googling things. All right? So if something goes wrong, if something goes wrong just take a deep breath. It's OK. And Google it. Don't copy the whole output. That's not going to work. Try to find like the specific, this error, copy that. And if all else fails, um, I, like this is both joking and serious, like restart it, reprovision it, turn it off, turn it on again. You'd be surprised how often that fixes things. So last couple of topics. Like I'm talking about two today. Uh, if you're not familiar with the local development survey that the Drupal community runs every year, uh, this was originally started by Jeff Geerling back in like the Drupal VM days. Uh, Einstar took it over. Um, so this is from this last year. This was released around the time of DrupalCon Pittsburgh. And you can see DDEV very slightly edges out Lando in these survey results. Uh, Doxel uh, is on there, but it's a bit lower. Um, and look, at, I don't care. Like, personally, I've used Lando the last several years, so I tend to still use Lando just because I'm a little more familiar with it. As, as you saw here today, DDEV is a little easier maybe to set up, and, and it is very slightly edging out Lando in the most recent survey. I don't care. I don't have a horse in the race. They're both good. Just please stop using Dev Desktop. Uh, and honestly, you shouldn't be using Drupal VM anymore either. Uh, Jeff. Gearling is brilliant. I worked with him for a number of years. Uh, he has really awesome YouTube content these days. He is not really maintaining Drupal VM anymore. So uh, if you happen to still be using Drupal VM, if you come across Drupal VM, just know it's awesome. Jeff's awesome. Don't use it. Um, the biggest advice I think I can give you today is have one. I don't care which one. Just have one for your project. I worked on a project years ago where we were using Drupal VM, again, this was a long time ago, except for like two guys who had Linux machines and they were really smart and they're like, I'm just gonna do it myself. And that was great until something went wrong. And nobody else on the team could help those two really smart guys fix their locals that were broken for three days because they were the, the smart guys doing something else, right? So as a team, you should decide we're gonna use Whatever. We're going to use Lambda. We're going to use DDEV for this project. You should all use it. You should have the same config. You should have the same workflow. You should be the same. That way, if my thing breaks and your thing is working, we can try to figure out what's different. If I'm using Lando and y'all are using DDEV and yours is working and mine's not, I'm screwed. Right? I have to figure out what's different about me. So pick one. And you know what? If you've sat here for half an hour and this all still sounds really hard, that's okay. 
couple things. First of all, you can go for free right now to GitHub and spin up a new repo. You can set up Lando and you can tinker around somewhere that it doesn't matter. That's what I did the first time I did it. I didn't put it in anything that mattered. <laughs> I did it over here, and I played with it, and I broke it, and I Googled what was wrong with it, and I fixed it, and I figured it out. That's free. It's just going to take you time. It doesn't hurt your project. It doesn't hurt anything. If you think, I'd really like to do this, but I'm really intimidated by this. Maybe somebody else on your team isn't going to be so intimidated by some of this startup. Remember, you only need one person on your team that can do this initial startup stuff. So you don't all have to be Lando experts to be able to use Lando. You just you need one person. And if finally you try, it's not working, remember there are numerous online options that you can use if you want the benefits of a containerization solution, you just struggle to implement it yourselves. So check with your hosting provider, look in the Drupal community, like there's stuff out there. Um, that you can use without having to set it up locally. And with that, we got some time for questions. What do you got? Yes. Oh, I mean, before the question, I must thank you because a lot of times I'm troubleshooting, I ended up on your blog. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate the plug. Uh, and then, uh, does DDoS support environmental variables? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a Docker thing, so it absolutely does. I'm not sure off the top of, like, I haven't played with them too much, but yes, you can absolutely inject environment variables into it. Yeah. They're just yeah. config. Yeah, it's just config. And in fact, it might even be a little simpler on DDEV than it is in Lando. Yeah. If you scroll down through that 200 lines, it tells it's you. It's in there how to do it, yeah. Again, like, that 200 lines in that DDEV config file, like, it can be a little intimidating at first, but if you actually read through it, it's basically everything you would ever want to do to a DDEF config. Yeah. If I'm stuck on a Windows laptop because the client yes. gives me one, is Lando or, or DDEV any are they one better for Windows? Than the other? I would open that up to the room. I think if, they're both pretty if good. If you run WSL2, yes, flawless. Right. Yeah. Would, Absolutely would, flawless. Would, you may not be able to run Docker. Yeah. But DDEV's got really good documentation for using an open source alternative called Kalima. And you can't run Docker or run some. Sometimes you can't. Because of licensing, yeah. if you work for a company that has more than 200 employees or $10 million a year worth of uh, income, they have to pay for Docker. Oh. And yeah. so the solution is there are some open source alternatives, Kalima being the one that seems to be the best. You install Kalima, it looks like a Docker desktop, or acts like it anyways, and you take off and run in WSL2. And you'll be if good. That, yeah. And usually the biggest problem I've run into when I'm using enforced machines is that they've got ports, firewalls buried inside them that are blocking. I had one that mm. blocked docs.docker.com. You can't mm. read the documentation. So. When you go to one of these cloud solutions, right. and again, DDAV has a launcher for Gitpod. So literally, you go in, you give it your Git repository, and, just, and it fires it up. Yeah. And that's where, again, like the cloud based solution, sometimes, especially in the government sphere, sometimes you have to do a cloud based solution. So, is that a cloud IDE fed RAM? No. No. So, okay. We can talk about that after, though. Let's, uh, yeah. You, uh, you had a question. I, like you, I, I use both. I teach both. So I got a few little points. So, number one, installing on Windows, um, you know, three commands, and that includes installing WSL2. So, it's very easy, as long as you don't have port blocks and stuff like that. It's actually it's a lot easier today than it was a year ago to install DDEV on a Windows machine. Okay. That's number one. Uh, number two point is. Uh, there was recently, and by recently I mean earlier this week, consensus in the community to make DDEV the default and recommended local development environment Ooh. for Drupal. There we go. I hadn't heard that. So that Drupal must be hot off the presses. Is an <laughs> well, <laughs> well the, the, the end result was it's not being called the official, it's being called the default. Yeah. There's that. And third, so I'm going to disagree with one of your slides. Wait, I'm here for it. It's a typo. Yeah. If you go back to the starting your project one, something like that, you have 
three commands. These? The, no, the git clone, and then yeah. a composer, and then a debug. Right there. I think that's dangerous. Okay. Number one, that assumes that you have PHP and Composer installed in the host operating system. It does? And if you do, there's no guarantee that the version of PHP on your host operating system is the same as the version of PHP inside Windows. Ah, yep, yeah, that's fair. So, like, when I teach, I, I actually tell folks explicitly not to do that. Okay. So I basically say, do you get Chrome? Yeah. Your DDev star, Linux star, and then do a DDev composer install. Oh, got it. Inside. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so that's that is fair. I will update that in the slides before I distribute. Yeah, yeah, that is a fair call out. That's true of initializing the site. Yeah. I always do the Linux first. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. I wanted to kind of pick that off of using Windows being our client makes us use Windows, government laptop, firewall, yeah. everything. Yeah. So we use VirtualBox. And yeah. some of us use Ubuntu and CentOS in the virtual box. But we want to get away from that and go to Lando so we all have the same config. Yeah. So is that common to see Lando inside a virtual box or a Windows machine? I mean you used to be. Yeah, it used to be. Uh, I I mean again you're doing at that point you're doing layers within layers within layers. Yes. Yes. You can do that. I would I would kind of tinker around with what they were talking about here, trying to get Kalima and the service layer up and running if you can't run Docker directly. If you're in that top lockdown of the environment, you can sign up for 50 hours a month for free. Of GitHub. Yeah. And, and, and literally, you use the DDAV GitHub launcher, or you stick the, there's one GitHub.yaml file you stick inside your, your repository, and then when you spin it up, what you get is an absolutely pristine, no ports blocked Linux machine with eight gigs of memory and or eighteen Online, gigs yeah. of memory and all the all the storage you need. And it's just a, yeah. It's just so easy. Get, get pod. Get pod. Get pod. Yeah. Io. You had a question right here in the front. Does it doesn't matter. That's actually what we use when we do post is run where you put up. Like Red Hat Linux and your local. That, so the question was, does it matter if the host and the local are the same, like Linux version? Not necessarily. I mean, it is it is very very remotely possible that like a Red Hat PHP distro has a very slightly different thing than a Debian PHP distro. The chances of that are pretty astronomical. Like as long as it's the same PHP version, the same database version. Like statistically, you're going to be fine. Okay. Like and like, frankly, you may not have that level of control. Like that is that is, you get what they give you. So I wouldn't worry too much about that.